Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a superb Brandon 3-inch refractor from the early 1950s. If this is where you live, then this is the telescope you need. Mid-century modern all the way. Okay, first we start first we start with the tripod. You can see how light it is. The mount is integrated, just attached to this with this bolt on the bottom. Uh, in this this is somewhat primitive in that it just rides, and if you're lucky, the bolt turns. So it doesn't tighten up on you, but it's easy enough to adjust it if you need to. There we have it. This telescope uh, has a very distinctive characteristic about it, and that is that it is definitely mid-century modern design aesthetic all the way through. It's just exquisitely perfect in that respect. Uh, now, the mid-century modern design, I'm not a design expert, but it is uh, very simple, very uh, kind of primitive, elegant in its ultra-clean simplicity. And I would like to point out that I did make one change to this telescope that uh, affected that slightly. I added the safety chain here. I cannot stand to have a telescope, and this thing really had a tendency to splay and fly apart. Uh, I can't stand to have a telescope without the safety chain, so I don't want to have my telescope hit in the dirt for any reason, if I can avoid it. Anyway, <clears throat> so I added that. I tried to be as uh, aesthetically sensitive as I could. But if you look at this thing, you'll see that ultra sleek, ultra modern. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. This is a classic, I'll tell you, in terms of purity. Look at the ultra simple finder here. The finder has an internal focusing mechanism. It's got an internal star diagonal buried inside there. I think I'll take that out and show it to you. It's quite interesting. Everything here is ultra clean, uh, ultra simple, and that makes it slightly dysfunctional. I've had to do <laughs> I've had to do a couple of things. For, for example, you cannot balance this telescope. So you either have to tighten up the bearings, which is non-trivial. If you tighten up the bearings, then it becomes quite stiff to operate. Let me show you how that works. Here's my telescope adjustment tool that I carry with me at all times in my back pocket. Just joking. This is a, uh, this is a spanner normally used to remove lenses from optics. And uh, let me get right up front here so I can show you how this works. This thing, this has a long, thin, elegant, you know, very stylish, skinny thing, skinny groove in there, and you can uh, tighten it up, loosen it up. Let me do it over this way. You can tighten it and loosen it, but you have to do it that way. Now notice, notice that if you loosen it up too much, the thing becomes tail heavy. Now that's even with the, this the screw on dew shield is on here, so it's, and no eyepiece is in it, so it's just too heavy, tail heavy. Um, so what are you going to do about that? Well, one solution, tighten it all the way down real, real good. By the way, I had to oil this. Maybe I should have greased it, but I oiled it to Reduce the friction. Now you can see, look at how clunky that is. That's pretty darn stiff. Well, my solution reduces the aesthetic of it considerably. But I made a little, and this is, I think, a standard three and a half inch clamp, modern clamp. Of course, this is not original. Put a little piece of stainless steel on here. Now, with this set up, we'll loosen the friction down to something reasonable. 
Now it's a little front heavy, which is perfect because you're going to take this out. And put an eyepiece in it. But now one of the nice things about this is you can adjust this easily. It's uh <laughs> Okay, so right about there, maybe increase the tension just a little bit. Once you get this thing tuned in, it's going to be quite good. Let's set the friction. Uh, that's just about right. That's just about what you need. <coughs> so fiddling with it, it now becomes a much more useful telescope. Believe me, I tried to use it without that, and it was a nightmare. It was a real pain. So anyhow, the thing is now much more usable, user-friendly. It's a and the optics on this thing are just wonderful. They're superb. They're almost as good as my Alvin Clark three-inch, which is premium and is, is at least as good as a Takahashi FC seventy-six. So this thing is good. A uh, very very nice telescope, and it's also. This is a grab-and-go telescope, pretty much. I mean, uh, it's very light. The construction here, this is aluminum here, and a very, you know, extruded aluminum, polished, beautifully finished, beautifully finished telescope all the way around. Let's take the eyepiece out and show you how light it is. This thing is almost a one-hand telescope. It's a little awkward. It's a one-hand telescope. And of course, it's a pain to set up all the, and there is no way to adjust that. By the way, the simple aesthetic here. <laughs> I mean, that there, are, there are no bolts here to a tight, to tighten. you that's what you got. What you got is what you got. So, uh, but once you do that, boy, it's very, very nice. The thing is a pleasure to use. It's just wonderful uh, for an Altaz mount, and to get. This kind of superb optical performance out of a telescope that's that light and easy and the helical focuser is not bad at all. Anyway, it's a, it's a unique telescope, quite unique in terms of aesthetics, operation, and everything. Once you've uh, sort of debugged some of the issues, not bad at all. To a large extent, this telescope puts form before function. But what a beautiful form. Look at this thing. It is just exquisite. Uh, lovely lines, beautiful simplicity to it, quite a wonderful and unique uh, shape and form for a telescope. And it's got a beautiful, beautiful image. So with a few adjustments, this telescope is superior. Here's the objective from the Brandon 3-inch you can see some writing on the very nice screw-on cover for it. This is nicely machined. The cell is beautifully machined. It doesn't have a very deep dew shield, maybe an inch or so. But what's most interesting about this, and highly unusual, is the air spacing. And I think you can see the edges of the two lenses should be visible to you and there's a huge airspace. I don't know what it is. Maybe looks like maybe uh, three quarters of an inch or so. Gigantic airspace. And it's uh, that's an unusual design. There are some threads about that and so forth. I'm not gonna I, I am re very reluctant to take these things apart. I just don't like to do that unless I absolutely have to. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna take the lenses out of there. Looks like it's clean enough. As a matter of fact, it's very clean, despite a little bit of dust that I just probably blew onto it. Here's a beautiful Brandon 32 millimeter. Boy, these are pretty eyepieces. Just beautiful. Can't believe that these were made back in the 1950s. They're exquisite. I can see why people appreciate these so much. This is the internal diagonal on the Brandon. It's just a nice round mirror. Don't worry that it's round. There's plenty of extra here. There's huge amounts of extra. 
uh, the diagonal would not need to be anywhere near that size if it was just an elliptical. So that's fine, it works great. It's plenty of extra space. Here's the printing on the back. You can see that it's just attached with the bolt. There doesn't seem to be any real adjustment for it. Of course, you adjust it by turning it, and that's what I have had to do on one occasion, which is no big deal at all. And uh, it didn't need any adjustment this way, so I'm, I guess, lucky in that respect. It's precisely made, though, so it's not a real big issue. I don't think it'd be any issue at all. This is the built-in star diagonal, if you want to call it that, on the Brandon. It's the tail piece right here, and it's uh, pretty darn simple. Goes right in there, and okay, I'm looking right back up through the finder. The eyepiece would normally be right here, <clears throat> so you're looking from the position of the eyepiece. You can see, I think you can see that there's a little uh, reticle there. And the reticle is on a housing, simple little housing, no optics involved really. And uh, you can adjust the position of the housing, <laughs> if I can do this, you can adjust that by turning a push-pull set of screws here. So you move this a little bit, then you go over here and move this. Um, I should have just moved it. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, yeah, it's a little tricky to do. Okay, I'll move it back here. So you're really not, um, the eyepiece has a, a nice flat field and you're just moving the reticle around inside the, the view of the eyepiece. Uh, kind of, in a way, primitive, and in a way, simple and elegant. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it just depends on your point of view, I guess, there. It's uh, certainly unique. I don't think you've ever seen anything quite like that before. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this wonderful Brandon 3-inch telescope from the early 1950s. Thank you very much for watching.